got to come out a little more, maybe. Half and a quarter footage. Looks like the crankshaft has got the end play is moving back and forth. Yeah. Either that or the whole thing is. that momentum or are you still putting steam to it? Oh. Wow. Yeah. No. Yeah, this eccentric. This no. eccentric needs to be taken off just a little. Okay, this is our second trial run up. We took 5,000 shim out of the eccentric and then we're hoping that'll get that little click out of it. Shims on that too, because oh, yeah, 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 up and down too. That might be where some of it is. But you can't feel it here. No, okay. Well, it gets a little steamy in here because we just got a bucket under the exhaust to catch the uh, condensed water out of it. We got a bucket under the steam trap here. Works pretty good. Uh, the oil pump, we 
got ready to put it on this morning and figured out that, or last night, figured out that it didn't talk. So I had to take that completely apart and check everything and we found a, a ratchet pawl that was down in the bottom of it. So we got that straightened out and then Tom made a beautiful little uh, lever here that clamps on the uh, on the eccentric rod to run the thing with it. And we're in the process of digesting it. So this pumps oil up through a copper pipe into the steam line up here. This is a little different setup than on the other shop engine. Uh, that was an old, old type displacement lubricator. This is uh, a little bit more modern in that it's a steam pump and it actually forces a metered amount of oil into the steam line. Look at that age. It's like we're gonna have a thunder shower. Well, he runs. Yeah. Now we gotta get a belt made. Hi, welcome to another edition of Old Steam Powered Machine Shop. Well, we finally got it running. Uh, we spent two days messing around with piping and the oil pump here, and uh, it's quitting time right now. And we just finished running the thing up, and uh, we really quite happy with it, the way it works. Uh, we've got to speed up the governor to slow the engine down just a little bit. Uh, doesn't quite have enough adjustment to get it down at the speed I want to run it at, but uh, that'll be the next thing. So we got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I'm building uh, some bearings for the line shaft hangers for the uh, counter shaft for the hacksaw and uh, I'll show you how that goes along. Uh, basically uh, just machines out of solid bar stock, uh, some bearings and then uh, there'll be quite a bit oversized over an inch and a half and we'll put an inch and a half uh, or something slightly smaller than an inch and a half uh, suspended in it for a uh, for a mandrel and then pour the babbit in. They aren't going to be split and adjustable like uh, the big main shaft is. I don't see any reason to take the extra time to make them adjustable. Uh, the bearings in the in the little uh, inch and a half counter shaft for the uh, shaper aren't made that way so I'm going to try it. Uh, so anyway we're getting them machined out and uh, we'll pour the bearings in them and then bore them out. Uh, the, the line shaft hangers are up and like I said we got the, we got the engine all piped up. The steam uh, separator works beautifully uh, and uh, uh, next thing is to make up a belt. Uh, I tore the line shaft down, uh, let's see, three days ago and dropped that side down and took about half of the pulleys off it and then so I could get my other pulleys on the big drive pulley for this engine and the drive pulley for the hacksaw and then put it back up again lined everything up and so that's ready to go um, last weekend well the weekend before two weeks ago uh, I was at uh, Canadagua New York for the steam show and it was a really good show we had nice weather and uh, uh, met a lot of viewers uh, up there and had a pretty good time. Then last week, this last weekend, I was in Lancaster County at the uh, Rough and Tumble Engineers uh, Historical Organization and they have their uh, 
uh, thrashing, Thrasherman show, what they call it, Thrasherman show, their summer show. And it was really cool. Uh, they had a lot of engines, a lot of thrashing demonstrations. Uh, met many viewers, which I had a chance to talk to at some length. And uh, it, was, it was just a very enjoyable time. So then when we got back Monday, we started working on, Tom and I got started working on this engine. And uh, we got bogged down on our little details here, but we finally got it going. And uh, so that's the story. So we'll get right to uh, machining the, uh, the bearings for the uh, hangar. Come on up here a second, I want to show you something. This is the uh, bearing that I'm uh, going to replicate. This is the shaft on the counter shaft. It's inch and a half diameter. Um, and this is a cast iron piece. It's not split. It's one piece and it's it's got a Babbitt liner in it and it's got these little these flange flanges on the end which at first thought are ornamental but as you can see it causes the oil that comes out of the bearing to drip right there at that spot and be caught in this little catch trough here which I have to make too. Um, this is a safety thing that I added. It's a piece of pretty heavy stuff. It's actually these these pins come in from each side and fit into dimpled holes, uh, 60 degree chamfered holes that go on each side of this, which allows it to self-align this way. And of course it can twist up here to self-align that way and with these uh, sets uh, jam nuts and adjustment nuts you can run the whole hanger up or down to align it up and down so you've got three axis alignment on these and uh, so this is a kind of a safety thing here uh, that if these points happen to pull out or loosen up or something this shaft can't drop out. Um, also, it doubles as a as a place to hang the drip trough on. Stock. That's why the why the end is so bunged up.
feeding a radius tool in there to get a radius on the inside. thousands just to clean it up, going back across. Okay, we'll feed that up on hand. Clean up that radius. Okay, now we got a tool that's got a radius ground into it. I didn't actually grind this tool, it was in some stuff that I inherited. It's not going to clean up completely because the stock was screwed up on the end. Okay, now we're starting a long hole with a long drill. up here in about uh, two inches in diameter. I'm going to do it in three steps. Uh, I found that this drill will go about one turn. Then I got to back it out. Chips up. in there so far that it works better if you run the second drill in first or run the second drill in for a while so you have clearance for the first drill.
the first row. Start all over again. Really? 
No, what do you mean destroy? I'm gonna put it into the wall, tear up the engine. Uh, you know, wear and tear from racing on it. Uh, nothing that wasn't fixable. I mean, if you came back and there was nothing on the bike that didn't require welding, you had a good night. <laughs> I wouldn't trade it for nothing. I didn't get it. I never got hurt for that. A lot of fun. That's a beautiful kid. It's not very free, but chips won't come out.
if I can get it to do a little better. You can see that side is pretty good. And it's right out to the last mark on the length here. The idea is to get the angle the same and the length of the, of the flutes the same, or the lips the same. So if we flip it over on this side, you can see the angle is a little bit off and it's short. Sometimes the belt sander looks pretty good for this. I can do it where you can see it. from a Morris Taper 5 to a Morris Taper 4, so it's too short, and the tang does not engage into the locks back in the back of the quill, so that's why this thing is spinning once in a while. Nothing I can do about it. I think it's working marginally better. 